Hello, Chillicothe First Church. Thank you for joining in our midweek service. I'm really enjoying this time of study and this whole series about evangelism. Last week, we talked about evangelism in our places of work. This week, we talk about evangelism within the schools. But before we get into the lesson, let us just take a couple moments to pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for everyone who's joined in this night. Lord, to, to study your word. Lord, those that desire to hear a lesson here in the midweek. Lord, may your blessings be upon them. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would use me to do your will, Lord, as I bring this message before your people. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Go before me, Lord, as I speak to your people. Lord, if those have that are watching tonight, if they have heavy hearts, Lord, I pray that you touch their spirits. Lord, if those that are sick, those that are afflicted, those that have the virus, we pray for your healing power and your healing touch. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Bless our time of study. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, for this lesson, evangelizing in the school system. You may remember from last week, I talked about Matthew chapter 10 and the disciples being sent out in pairs and Jesus giving them instructions and what to do as they went out to minister. And I know that Matthew chapter 10 verse 6 really stood out to me and really gave me a heart for evangelism to start off this year. And as you see, Matthew chapter 10 verse 6, Jesus told his disciples to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Again, we see Jesus saying, go, go. Again, we see in Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 through 20, we we believe that this is the last words that Christ spoke before he ascended into heaven. And simply he was telling his disciples to go and make Christ-like disciples of all nations. So we talked about that last week. Remember the emphasis on go. You know, if we wait on people to show up where we're at, at our house, at our church... We very well may be waiting a long time. But if we go to where there is lost people, those that are hurting, those that are lost, will have a great opportunity for evangelism. And so I want to bring before you another scripture found in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. As Jesus said to his disciples, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Again, we see the emphasis, go. Go to the lost. And as we go to the lost and minister to people, that includes our local school systems, that includes students. On June 25th, 1962, the U.S. Supreme Court declared prayer in public schools to be unconstitutional. And to this day, there is major restrictions on prayer in our public schools. Prayers in our public schools have to be student-led. Teachers are not permitted to lead their students in prayer. Principals are not permitted to 
to lead their students in prayer. And from 1962 to our present time, we've seen the results of prayer being kicked out of our public schools. As a result of there not being prayer in our public schools, we've seen massive shootings in our schools. We've seen major drug problems happen in our public schools, gangs and violence has ran rampant in our big cities, public schools. Fighting has taken place many, many times. Strong uses of profanity has happened. Teachers have been assaulted by students. Many students have been the victim of extreme, powerful bullying by other students. Definitely, we need God to be placed back in our public school system. And it's not just the public school system that needs evangelized. Our Christian schools need to be evangelized as well. I found it to be a little disappointing as I went to a local Christian school in 1997 and hearing a student that had been enrolled for two weeks speak during lunch once and say, I didn't know this was a Christian school. This is a Christian school. Certainly he saw many students reflect a lifestyle and a behavior that was less than Christ-like. And so just because students go to a Christian school does not mean that in fact they serve Christ and that they are Christians. I want to give you four points to ponder as we talk about this whole evangelism in our school systems. Number one, pray for our students and the faculty members. Our students, they're facing some rough, tough situations as they go to school. They need prayer. One of our own pastoral members, Pastor Sarah, is also now a teacher in the inner, inner city school system in Columbus. Certainly, she needs our prayers. Pray for our students. Pray for our teachers. Pray for our principals. They're all in need of prayer. Don't get complacent just because you don't, or you're not in a school setting yourself. Pray for those that are. They need our prayers. The second point I want to bring before you. Encourage our students to do their very best. I'd love to see our students do their absolute best. You know, you might find one struggling with math. Encourage them. Encourage them to keep going. I look at it from a biblical standpoint in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. It says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That includes person studies. 
Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 says, Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So absolutely, we need to be encouraging our students from a biblical standpoint to do their absolute best. Encourage them not to quit. You know, many people looked at Michael Jordan as a role model, and one of the best things I believe that he said in his time off the court as a player, he said, stay in school. I believe that was great, that he's encouraging young people not to quit. If you know anybody that has quit school, don't condemn them. Encourage them to go back. As long as a person is willing and able, it's never too late for them to go back to school and learn. LeBron James has been very instrumental in starting an I Promise school in Akron, Ohio. Helping students that are at risk to get the education that they need. I think about all the graduations and the different ceremonies that I've been to over the years. I've been to them from kindergarten, high school, college. I'm here going to a nice long ceremony at the University of Kentucky. Seeing people get their master's degrees, doctoral degrees. Seeing them grin ear to ear with their accomplishments. But you know the most enthusiastic graduation I ever saw that I attended was a GED graduation. And one night I met with some friends in Columbus and went to a GED graduation. And people from all walks of life, from people from age 20, age 30, 40, you had single moms, you had people that had families, you had people that were grandparents, all these people graduating with their GED. I mean, in each and every one of them, hooping and hollering like they had just won the lottery, like Publishers Clearinghouse had just come with a van and a nice big check. That's how excited they were because of the accomplishment that they had done. Saying that indeed, I did it. I finished my education. I finished. I think about my time, my time in school. I know school was very hard, very tough for me. Really, really had to work at it. Very fortunately, in 2004, graduating from Bible college, and in the fall, right after that, making the difficult decision to move out of state to Kentucky and start attending Asbury Theological Seminary. And I remember during that first semester, I remember really, really struggling with a church history class, and it was just so hard in these comprehensive tests. That we had. I remember pulling an all nighter and studying for a test the entire night, only to see the morning come. I knew it wasn't ready, and I knew I, I talked to my family and contemplated maybe moving back to Ohio. But you know what? I didn't. I didn't leave. I continued to press on. I continued to go on. And four and a half years later, in 2009, oh, the joy and excitement of finally the Lord helping me to accomplish the degree of Masters of Divinity. Oh, it was, it was a great time of relief. It was a great time to celebrate. 
and what have really, really prepared me for ministry. There were some really tough times, and I remember one of my pastoral friends just really encouraging me. And he knew I was struggling. He knew he was, I was having a hard time as I talked to him. He said, you know what? You're not alone in this. Keep on going. Keep on going. Those are some words I need to hear. So our students, those that are studying in college, graduate school, whatever it is, elementary, whatever level, they all need encouragement. They all need prayers. They all need us to cheer them along. The third point I want to bring before you. Look for ways to serve our local school system. You may have the opportunity to volunteer. You may have a chance then to be instrumental in the inner, inner city school systems. You may have a chance right here locally, opportunity to serve the schools right here in Ross County. Seize the opportunity. Seize the opportunity. Lord willing, in the fall, I want to believe that the coronavirus will be a lot better and with it then hope that the opportunity is there again in the fall for see you at the poll. That day where our government does allow us as adults to gather with students around flagpoles all across the nation. Pray with the students. See you at the poll. Hope that it does happen again this fall. I remember being a part of that in years past and how great it was. The fourth point I want to bring before you. Never stop learning. Never stop going to school. It doesn't have to be a form of formal education. Never stop learning. Never stop educating yourself. Us as ministers, the Nazarene Church, our denomination, our district requires us to have 20 hours of continued education every year. And yes, for all of our pastoral staff, that is tough, that is hard. We have to squeeze it in between our day jobs, being a part of pastoring this church, all the demands of everyday life, ministry, all those things, then we also have to have our continued education. And as tough as it is each and every year to keep that current, to go back and go through the material, to record all those things and have it all current, it's hard. But you know what? I can see the benefits of it each and every year, continuing to prepare myself and the, our pastoral staff to continue on in ministry, being thoroughly equipped. Study the scriptures at home. Be a great student of God's word. It is very biblical to study God's word. And the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. He says, Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved. We're all called to study. We're all called to learn. We're all called to educate ourselves. In 2 Peter Chapter 3, verse 18. Peter wrote two books in the New Testament. In the very last verse he wrote, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. He says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. But he says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How are we going to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? we got to pick up God's word. we got to read the four Gospels. we got to learn what Jesus was all about. Grow 
and your knowledge about Christ. Study God's word. Learn what Christ was all about in the four gospels and the heart that he has and continues to have for his people. So evangelizing our local school system and also as we read and study the scriptures, we will know how to evangelize. There is evangelism within school. There always has, there always will be that need. We need to evangelize our local school systems. That is my lesson for tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer in closing. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that will never return void. Lord Jesus, help us to study all the scriptures and the gospels and your word and Lord Jesus, your life legacy here on earth. Help us to know what it's all about. Lord, I pray that you would be with our students as, we, as they go to school. Be with them. Place your hedge of protection upon them and help them, Lord, as they learn. Lord, for the subjects that are rough, tough for them, help them, Lord Jesus. May your Holy Spirit enable them to continue to keep learning. Lord, may you be with the teachers. May you be with Pastor Sarah. She teaches in the inner city school system in Columbus. Be with the teachers. Be with the principals. Help them each and every step of the way. Lord, uh, if there's times in which our students can't be present in the school, may you just be with them in remote learning and learning from home. Be with their parents, Lord. Help them, Lord, as they, um, as they work with them, the students and their homework. Just be with everyone, Lord. Help us all to continue to learn and never stop learning. Lord Jesus, for all our time here on earth, may we continue to learn, grow in your grace. Lord, for those that are sick and afflicted, for those that are hurting right now, we pray for your health and healing to come. Lord, we continue to turn to you, Lord, about the situation with the virus, Everything that has happened with the pandemic, we continue to pray, Lord Jesus, that you would touch our nation, be with our government officials, help them to make good godly decisions. We love you, Lord Jesus. We give you thanks and praise, and thank you for our midweek service. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace. Live in victory. Share God's love. Love you, church. Goodbye.